Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Today I am taking you through my bookshelf and some of my favorite books. Most of the books I read are YA but I do have some other random books throughout and I'm even going through some of my favorite childhood books today. The first shelf has some books I haven't read yet, my old Kobo, some cookbooks, and my old planner. I decided to put this book on a stand just to change it up, but this one I just picked up at Chapters. It's Pièce de Mamonk. I haven't read it yet, but I was looking for a French one and the cover caught my attention. Next is my Hunger Games series. I've seen the movies, but I haven't read the books, so I recently picked these up at my local used bookstore for about $6, I think. Even though these were bought used, the books are in perfect condition, so they were probably only read once. Next is a book that I started reading in high school, but never really got into it. I think the level of French was just above me at the time, so I didn't really understand what was going on. So I recently started to reread this, and I will let you guys know on my Goodreads what I think about it. The next couple books I picked up at the same used bookstore as I previously mentioned. I haven't read either of them yet, but they sounded interesting and they were only like about $5 each, I believe. So I figured it was worth a shot. Next is my most used cookbook ever, and that is Liv B's Vegan on a Budget. She is a YouTuber from Nova Scotia, and even though I'm not vegan, her recipes are really good and they're super cheap and easy to make. Also, she's a fellow Canadian, so I can always find any products or ingredients that she talks about at my own grocery store. Next is a cookbook I got for Christmas in 2012, and that is Baking with the Cake Boss. I really like this one for specialty desserts and pastries. You can see all of the pages I have flagged and go back to frequently. <laughs> Now we have my next shelf, which houses some of my all-time favorite series. I recently got rid of a bunch of books, so what's left truly are my favorites. First on the list is the Crash series by Nicole Williams. I found these quite a few years ago at Chapters just by chance. The first book's title and cover caught my attention, and then I read the back of the book and it was very intriguing. It's about a teenage ballerina, and at the time I really loved ballet, so... I really enjoyed these books. You can tell I read them a couple times because the edges are starting to wear a bit. Next we have my books by Kira Cass. The first one is The Siren. I got this at Walmart when I was in high school and I actually enjoyed it. I would say it's more fantasy than YA but it was still really good. Next we have the selection series, so here are the first three books, which I consider to be the original trilogy because they all follow the same main character. Her name's America and it's set in a dystopian world where they pick their next princess through a competition known as the selection. I really enjoyed that the same storyline was held throughout all three books. So next are part of the selection series as well, but they follow different characters within the same world. I enjoyed The Air a lot, but the other two books were kind of mediocre. I don't even remember finishing The Crown, I just couldn't really get into it, but maybe I'll go back and try to reread it. Next we get to talk about my most favorite series that I have ever read, and that is I Tell You I Love You But Then I'd Have to Kill You. I started reading the series when I was in grade 5, and I even pre-ordered the last three books and read them with a hardcover, which says a lot considering I absolutely despise hardcovers. This series follows Cammie Morgan and her time at the Gallagher Academy for Exceptional Young Women, which is essentially a spy school. A couple of the books have a bit of a love interest, but the overarching themes are not your usual high school growing up books. They are quite unique and very adventurous. 
I've read these books many times and have recently started rereading them yet again. They are super chill reads and good for a wide range of ages. As I mentioned, I originally read these books in grade 5 and I am now 21 and I'm rereading them. When I was putting these books away, I found one of my old bookmarks that I used to love because they had point shoes on it and like I mentioned previously, I used to really be into ballet. Next we have The Vampire Diaries, which I bought because I was obsessed with the show when I was younger, but I didn't really enjoy the books. I read one and a half of the four books here, there's actually two in each of the physical copies, but I just didn't really get into it like I was expecting to. Next we have the Divergent Trilogy, which I started reading when I was in grade 7 and I absolutely fell in love with Divergent. If you have ever read any sort of YA, you have probably heard about these books. They are one of my favorite dystopian world novels. I read Divergent in a weekend, which at the time was super quick for me. Insurgent was also pretty good, but I didn't overly enjoy Allegiant because it was written dual perspective and at the time I didn't really like that style of writing, so I'm considering rereading it. Next we have The Wonderful World of Harry Potter. I actually only started reading these a couple years ago and I'm only on the fifth book, but I've been reading them in French so it's been taking me quite a bit longer than reading a book in English. So far I really really like them and wish I had read them when I was younger. I really don't need to give an overview of these books because everyone and their mothers have heard of them. My biggest pet peeve with French books is that the spine title on the side is reversed so the books are upside down when I have them horizontal or they are opposite to the rest of the books in my bookshelf and not to mention they're also super expensive because of translations. Next are two of my favorite and somewhat controversial classics. I like To Kill a Mockingbird but I really dislike Ghost at a Watchman which is Harper Lee's, shall we say, first attempt at To Kill a Mockingbird and now I totally understand why it was only later released. Next, we have The Great Gatsby. There are so many things that I love and hate about this book, but I did write one of my best essays ever on this book. I also find Fitzgerald and his wife Zelda's life really interesting. Katie Bellotti talks a lot about this on her podcast, Thick and Thin, so if you're interested, definitely check that out. Next we have All the Right Places by Jennifer Niven. I was recommended this book by one of my friends a couple years ago and I'm so glad she told me about it because I really really enjoyed it. The next book is actually quite unique in my collection because The Beginning of Everything by Robin Schneider is actually written from a male perspective and most of the books I have are female perspectives. Now we have To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. I haven't read the second book, but I did really like this one. The movie, on the other hand, I didn't hate, but I didn't love it. I felt like it missed a few key details from the book. The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. What a classic. I read this book back in 2014 when it first came out, well before the hype of the movie, so in a way it kind of holds a special place in my heart. Next we have Juliet by Anne Fortier. This is actually my cousin's book, so I should probably get that back to her, but it's about a young girl, Juliet, who goes on an adventure of self-discovery and in search of answers about her family. Next, we are moving into some of my favorite childhood books, and the first of them being my books by Robert Munch. I actually got to see him live when I was younger, and he's also a Canadian author. It's really cool because each of the books he writes are about a different child that he's met and each of them are dedicated to the child that inspired him for that story. Some of his best ones are Smelly Socks, Alligator Baby, and Ribbon Rescue. I was actually Ribbon Girl for Halloween one year too. Next we have my Tinkerbell and the Neverland Fairies books. I used to love Tinkerbell when I was younger and she's definitely my favorite Disney character. More recently, as in the past couple years, my cousin made a Tinkerbell inspired tutu that I actually got to model for her. Next we have The Little Critter books by Gina and Mercer Mayer. My mom used to read these to me when I was really little before I could even speak. I think there were more books but these are what I still have. My favorite one was definitely Just Go to Bed. Love You Forever is definitely my most read book when I was little. My mom used to tell me this quote from it all the time. I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. 
I actually recently f realized that Robert Munch wrote this book, which I guess makes sense why my mom and I loved it so much. Next we have my Disney storybook collection, which I got for my very first Christmas. It has about 20 of the Disney classics in here. This copy of A Charlie Brown's Christmas is the most special book I own. It's a Hallmark recordable storybook, which is read to me by my grandma before she passed away. We used to love Charlie Brown, so having this book makes my heart really happy. Here we have the entire Junie B. Jones series by Barbara Park. Some are in French, some are in English, but I do own every book. These also hold a special place in my heart because Junie B. Jones and A Little Monkey Business is the very first chapter book I've ever read. I can still clearly picture the day that I got it. The Kissing Hand by Audrey Penn is another book my mom read to me often. I believe I got this when I was in kindergarten. A Pocket Full of Kisses is like a sequel to this book. Dr. Seuss may be crazy and hate children, but his books were great. I mean, who didn't like One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish, or The Cat in the Hat? But my personal favorite was Green Eggs and Ham. One of my cousins actually used to call me Sam because of this book. And here's an overview of my bookshelf. I used to have books in front of books and even stacked on other shelves in my room, but I recently got rid of a bunch, so what is left are either books that I have yet to read or my personal favorites. I also have some other things stored on here like electronics and some school stuff. If you made it to the end of the video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell if you want to see more from me. Also check out my Goodreads because I have all the books I've read since 2016, including the books I don't own listed on there. And leave a comment with your favorite book and I might add it to my TBR list. With that said, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all next week.